So, good morning everyone. So, my name is Koenji. Uh, I'm a research scientist in my house. I'm working there for more than four years. So, as a representative of the team, so today I would like to introduce some ongoing uh, projects using the open form in our team. So, it will be cover several projects, but they are sharing the, uh, the same topic. So, as you can see here, I give a, a more general Title. So it's the multi phase and reacting, uh, reacting flow. And uh, for the clean combustion, what's specified is uh, ammonia, ammonia combustion. So, firstly, I would like to introduce our team. The computational reacting flow memory is led by Professor Huni. And then we have total 26 members coming from 50 countries. So, it's quite diversity. And most of them are postdoctor and PhD students. Uh, the name highlights in here is uh, the one contributes to the, uh, the materials in these presentations. And since we are the only CFD team in CCRC, so we are doing uh, a lot, uh, full level of uh, physical scale of the simulation from DNS, LES, and and the one simulation for the industry level of uh, simulation. And then we also have the collaboration with all the experiment team from the uh, lambda to the uh, engine scales. So this figure shows uh, the CCRC um, synergetics and multi scale combustion research. And then it's fully well described the uh, uh, collaboration in the CCRC with the uh, computational and the uh, experiment. So when we do the uh, DNS, only we use the, uh, our in-house code cost for some colonial uh, like uh, previous conversion and non-previous conversion. And then for the engineering type of simulation, we use converge for the engine simulation. And then we also use ANSI sprint for the uh, induction simulation like uh, uh, glass furnace and the heavy oil gasification. And then we mainly use open form for the LES and also DNS for some memory scale, spray and flames. So here I list the, uh, the ongoing projects in our team. It's cover a lot of uh, uh, topics. So in this topic, I will focus on the, the first, uh, the first three one. And they are all related to the ammonia combustion but with different type of uh, combustion technical. So for the first one is the ammonia spray. If the, in the scenario is like we injected the liquid combustion in the gas space and then to see the, how, how it's going. And the second one is the um, turbulence ammonia flame. But this is the ammonia fixed with the hydrogen, so it's a simulated uh, cracking ammonia flame. And the third one is the um, repair. There is a hydrocarbon and ammonia blended flame. So this, since we add the hydrocarbon, so the soot formation is a big issue. So in this topic, we are mainly focused on the soot modeling. So this is not all my, uh, not all my my words. So what my I contribute to most. So let's so first let's see the ammonia spray. So this topic is, uh, is more and more interesting uh, as you see that yesterday and today there are another topic also talking about this uh, directly injected uh, liquid ammonia. So what's the difference for the ammonia spray? The main difference is the uh, large latent heat of the evaporation. So it will cause a strong cooling effect. And then it also has a very high Evaporation rate at the classical operation condition. And then in the existing, uh, existing work, there are lots of efforts to find a solution for a practical, for a practical problem to like to stabilize the flame when you inject the liquid combustion, liquid ammonia. So in our work, we are trying to use the high fidelity DNA study to characterize the ammonia. Uh, spray in, in a hot environment. 
So here shows the biometric um, setup. We use the uh, spring form in the open uh, form. It's already a nice uh, solver. So basically, we use the oiling for the gas phase and use the Lagrangian mass for the droplet trajectory. So in the gas phase, there is the ammonium and the mass mixture, and the temperature is uh, 420 Kelvin. So the, the temperature and the, uh, this small fraction is basically we prevent the evaporation in the inlet, so this uh, saturates the uh, concentration for the ammonia. And then the air is, is uh, the, the environment is the air, but we do the practical study and then we change the temperature from the case one is the, with the same temperature with the uh, liquid. And the third, the second one, we slightly increase the temperature to 3 Kelvin. And the third one is the hot environment with 6 Kelvin, uh, 6 Kelvin Kelvin. And then the part inside is 6 micrometer. It's much smaller than the, uh, than the grid size. So we can use the Lagrangian method. So the drop chain is, uh, is a simple drop chain. And then for the turbulence inline, we used a um, periodic pipe to generate the full development uh, turbulence. And this inline is quite expensive. We used uh, more than 4,000 uh, threads. And then one case did uh, about 10 days. So first uh, we, uh, let me see the overall uh, of the jet cap. Uh, the jet, as you see that in, the, in this, uh, we call it is cold environment. So in this figure shows the temperature as well as the droplet uh, distribution. Due to the large latent heat of the evaporation, so both the temperature, the gas temperature and the droplet temperature is decreased. So in this case, it is de de uh, decreased by about uh, 50 Kelvin which is much higher than other classical liquids such as Acton. So due to the large latent heat, all the droplets, so the droplets mainly survive for the uh, reach to the far fields to the jet lens. But when we increase the uh, temperature, so the evaporates will be much increased. And the droplets cluster in this cold jet and then they are Hardly survive in the uh, in the far field, and also we found the uh, hot air treatment will reduce the dry weights and also the penetration map. Also, you, you can see the turbulence construction is more stressed due to the high temperature. And the second thing we this figure shows the droplet and gas temperature. For in each figure, the left part is the droplet temperature. And the right part is the gas temperature. As you see in the first case, both droplets and the gas temperature decrease. And then the droplets have uh, is the temperature is much is uh, lower than the gas gas phase. This is still due to the uh, much later later heat. And then when we increase the temperature, and then the droplets temperature is still decrease, but the uh, Gas phase temperature is increased due to the air mm, enrichment. enrichment. So in this case, the droplet temperature decreased, but the gas phase increased, which means the cooling effect of the evaporation is still larger than the heating effects due to the conductivity. And then we further increase the temperature to 6 Kelvin, and both the gas phase and the liquid. And the droplet temperature is increased, but the increase of the droplet temperature is much lower than the gas phase. And then this source then uh, provides more, it's more clear to explain why the, for the temperature change. So the left part is the uh, mass source term, and the right part is the mass phase source term. So if you see if, uh, mass source is uh, positive, this means the uh, evaporation is occurred. So we see that the evaporation is mainly for, uh, appear in this uh, mixed layer. And then in the first and second case, you see there is a negative density source term. I mean, that's why the gas phase temperature is also decreased. And then 
Also for, uh, for the third case with the hot environment, we see that both the uh, uh, mass thruster and the SV thruster is positive. So and then we use this uh, uh, this wireless analyze to uh, quantitatively analyze the uh, clustering. So we got this parameter, uh, this k. If the k larger than one, this means the particle is uh, cluster, and if it's uh, less than one, is the uh, dispersion. So here the MSG is all the the particle is trying to cluster in this mixed layer and with the increase for the uh, environment temperature the cluster value is also increased this due to the reason behind this is uh, this, in this mixed layer we have a higher turbulence friction and also when we increase the temperature when we increase the evaporation ratio and then we increase the drag force and then the second part is the uh, Turbulence ammonia hydrogen flame. So, this is a simulated uh, cracking ammonia flame. So, we have uh, in the field side, we have a mixture of ammonia, hydrogen, and nitrogen. In this case, we are mainly focused on the combustion water development. So, uh, this is the uh, cost uh, ammonia hydrogen flame. This thing, they are using the 1D Raman uh, measurement. Got the, for the temperature, major species and major fraction. So they got a very nice uh, experiment they have, and it's already well discussed in the TNA workshop in last day in October. So basically, they have two uh, they have two cases with um, different power ratio. So the first one is the uh, 90, uh, 40, 40 percent of parking, and then the third one is the uh, ratio, which results in the first case has a 90% of hydrogen in the in the fuel, and then increase to 30, uh, well, 33% of uh, hydrogen. So in the first case, you see that uh, uh, hydrogen only is not uh, so much. And then for simulation, this is the numerical setup. We use the uh, um, cylinder for the external domain. And then is the uh, domain length and the diameter. So we draw, uh, we draw in the three dimensional stru structure mesh, and the total grid about uh, three million. We um, we check the model the subway scale turbulence kinetic energy, and make sure this model one is always lower than twenty uh, percent. So for the turbulence inness. We uh, run additional areas for fully developed turbines, periodic pipe flow to get all the uh, fully developed uh, turbines in that. So firstly for the combustion model, we borrow this uh, principal component analysis from the Sudan plant. So the basic idea for the principal component analysis is to reduce the dimensionality of the big data. So imagine you have a big data, and then there are a lot of values there. Master have some values have correlation with others. So based on this principle com component analysis, we will reduce the dimensions and got yearly uh, several. So for example, two um, such as picture fraction or probabilized variable, and then we can got the correlation of these other values with this principal component. And then we, we, we will try to uh, generate the correlation with the principal component and the full, the full data and then to run the um, simulation. So in this case, uh, by using this approach, we don't need to transport all the species and then we only need to transport the um, transport equation for the principal components. So in, in, in this case, we we use two principal components and then the missing slide we need to generate the correlation with the principal component and the full data so here uh, in order to choose this uh, nonlinear regression so we use a, a deep neural network this is a standard model 
and we didn't do too much efforts to develop this DNA model because the, the existing one is already uh, put to use. So as you see that here, the uh, DNA journey data is very close to the orange data. So with the, uh, this is the first approach for this um, PCA and DNA model. So we use a, a unity with number. So this means we need to consider the different diffusion. So we test this in the, in the first case, which has a lower uh, hash ratio. So do you see that uh, this uh, results, all the temperature and the major spatial is uh, uh, well agreement has a well agreement with the experiment experiment management. Only with the height there are some discrepancy, and this is uh, uh, attributed to the we ignorance the uh, differential diffusion for this case, so we have some discrepancy for hydrogen um, predictions. <coughs> also for the loss and the local extinction is uh, uh, doing uh, more or less well with the uh, experiment. So this means our proposed uh, uh, PCA and the DNA model works well for this uh, case with lower um, hydrogen concentration. And further, we also use the frame progress variable, the FPV model. So in this case, in the FPV model, we are in, in the, the same, we don't need to solve all the, uh, all the transport equation for the species. And then we only solve the progress variable and the mixed fraction. And then during the area simulation, we will do using the uh, lookup for all the um, species. And then based on all the species, and we calculate the temperature and the density. Here, for this specified case, we use the, um, the mass fraction of the uh, water vapor as the focus variable because this is a ammonia hydrogen, so the only the uh, CO, only the H2 is the major product, and it has a good mapping to uh, retrieving the other parameters. And then we use. Build a mixture fraction. So we uh, move step more, and then we you, we try to consider the differential diffusion in the FPV. So we use a so-called uh, spatial weighted FPV model. So this model is originally uh, proposed for simulating the oxy fuel combustion to capture the inlet diffusion of the CO2. And this is a correlation with the. Professor Zhao Weiliu in Guangzhou University of Science and Technology. And then in this case, we extend this um, special weighted as special weighted FPV model to run this ammonia hydrogen case. As you see in this figure, uh, in the uh, flames, we will use unity spray number and uh, uh, different diffusion. The extinction strain rate is much different. So, how to consider the differential diffusion in flames? So, the idea is for this, for this model, the idea is quite simple. So, we generate two flame uh, data sets. One is using the unity with number, and the other one uses the detailed trust model. And during the simulation, we will do a weighting based on the two flame data sets. Like, for example, we take 50% of the data from the uh, unity with number flames and another 50% using the data from the differential diffusion from data. So the most important thing is, is to determine how to determine this weighting factor theta. So here we use the um, spatial weighted. So we transfer the, some major species. For example, in this case we transfer the uh, ammonia the ammonia, hydrogen, and the nitrogen, and the uh, to water vapor. And then, based during the simulation, we will calculate the, the theta on the file for each cell. And then, to for look, look up table, got all the values for for the simulation. So here we sh show the results for TF1 and TF2. So we compare the. Uh, Differential diffusion solver and also the, uh, the prediction using the unity with number. So, actually, for um, when we consider the differential diffusion, we got a better prediction for the temperature, and more important is for the hydrogen. You see, 
after considering the differential equation, we capture this uh, um, this decrease in the theory uh, theory size. So it's much better than the unity with number. And the other one is the important parameter is the differential diffusion parameter. We borrow the concept from the high carbon flame. We define this uh, um, differential diffusion parameter, which is uh, using the mixture fraction of uh, H element minus by the mixture fraction of the uh, element mixture fraction. So you see that. So the first law. First row is the result for the TF1 with a lower hydrogen concentration, and the third row is the, mm, the TF2, the second case with a higher uh, hydrogen concentration. So we see the simulation is quantitatively uh, capture this differential diffusion parameter in the in the bio fuel region. So let's move on to the third part, which is the uh, hydrocarbon ammonium blended sooty flame. So here we focus on the development of the suit model. So we have a big team, and for the simulation, we collaboration with the, uh, Professor Wakarawa in the uh, University of Michigan, and we also collaborate with our colleague for the uh, Ma Professor Mana Saladi. They are providing the uh, kinetic mechanism, and also the Minox group. They are providing the experimental for validation. So, so, the, so there are a lot of experimental to study the ammonia effect on the suit, and they got some consistent results. And then it's really show that when we add the ammonia, the suit will be significantly decreased. All the, all the uh, experimental in like counter flow flake, co flow flake, and the turbulence flake shows from the similar channel. But the issue from uh, new simulation because as you see that the state of R of the suit model is significantly under predict the, this uh, ammonia effect on the suit formation. For example, this is the result from the University of Toronto using the co flame. So this orange curve shows the model result. So there is a large discrepancy and uh, significantly under predict the ammonia effect. Similar results are also uh, obtained by Yellow University using the uh, NGA code. So this indicated that the existing suit model is not suitable for the um, ammonia blending field. So we need to improve the suit model. So, so in this study, we carefully relieve all the uh, suit model, starting from the inception model and then to the service group. So for the uh, for the simulation, for the co-flow simulation for this uh, multi-dimensional jet flight, we use an in-house development open form solver, and then we use Candana to uh, handle the detailed chemistry, and then for the counter um, flow, we use the uh, open smoke developed by Professor Koch, and then for the mechanical, we use the uh, reduced uh, house angle pH three point zero mechanical. This already has uh, more than 100 species. And then for the uh, nitrogen chemistry, we use uh, the one from um, Professor Globos. And then for the soup dynamic, we use the uh, method of moments because we intended to use, use this model in turbulent case, so we choose the method of moment instead of the cyclone method because the later one is too expensive for a turbulent case. And then for the uh, suit pathway, we consider both inception, absorption, and uh, surface flow and oxidation. And also consider all the other details, such as the suit diffusion, and the gas phase and suit radiations, and so on. And then first uh, we uh, look at uh, this suit inception model. So in Basically, in the, the mainstream for the CFD, we still use this classical irreversible inception model, which was developed by Frank Chan Wang in uh, 1991, so it's a very old model. And if you carefully look 
at this model, there are a lot of uh, tuning parameters to, uh, to match the experiment data. For example, for the, the sticking coefficients, in different different groups, they are using much different sticking coefficients for uh, in their simulation. This, this sticking coefficient is used to describe the possibility of the collision of the two pH molecules. So, in detail, they have some temperature dependence and also only mass dependence, and even more, some group using the, uh, some constant uh, parameter is just to match the measurements. So, we carefully review the, uh, this uh, coefficient in, in the colorful flame. And we found this temperature dependence sticking coefficient can better predict the pH and also the suit to the stream rate sensitivity. Because this stream rate sensitivity is very important for the uh, turbulence suiting flame simulation. However, we do a further uh, validation in the inverse control flame. This flame is the uh, is signal with the Total flame, but they inverse the fuel inlet oxy oxidized inlet. So we inject the oxygen from the center and are surrounded by this fuel. So what you see that this suit is forming in the outside of the flame. So this means the suit and the pH they are not cross the free form. So the oxidation is mainly prevalent. So this structure is uh, is a good idea to study the information because the oxidation part is almost uh, equilibrium. So, as you see that here we compare the metal pH and the predicted one. And you see that in the post volume regime, the predicted uh, pH is decreased but the metal is increased. And also for the suit, the chain is different. So, uh, this figure is more clear to show the, this quantitative comparison. So, for the uh, measurement, you can see that the suit volume crack, the suit intensity uh, is, will not increase in this post flow region, but the simulation provides a continued increase. This is because when we use this in reversible inception model, once they are pH, they will commit to form suit. This means this, uh, this in reversible inception model cannot be used in this case. And then, so we, should, we, uh, we think this radical may play an important role for the suit interception. That is why in the post volume regime, there is no uh, radical and then the suit formation is stopped. So, in order to solve this issue, we developed a, a so-called reactive inception model. So, uh, first of all, clarify, this model is still an uh, empirical suit inception model. We didn't um, post it from the first uh, principle calculation. So it's just including some uh, important component. So basically, uh, we have three parts. The first part is the reversible diamondization, and the second part is the um, diamondization dehydrogenation. This means the physical diamond will be activated by the radical through the reaction 2 and reaction 3. And then the, this chemical bond will be formed in the, in the diamond, so based on the, this third part. And then we use the show and the diamond radical as uh, reaching the steady state assumption. And then we, we can easily calculate the concentration of the diamond radical and finally got this total diamondization rate and then we uh, do a lot of validation for this uh, proposed model and then first of all we validate in the counterflow of flame this is much better than the, the irreversible model in, way, in terms of the spatial distribution and also the the amount of the predicted suit. And the second, we also predict, we validate this in the normal curve flame flame and the inverse curve flame flame. You see that this suit curve is left off in the post flow region. And then, how, how this uh, reactive model performs in the ammonia branded field? So you see that 
The reactive instruction model is significantly improve the soot sensitivity to ammonia addition. And then we break down this soot formation rate into the instruction of the adsorption and the HACA, HACA surface group. You see that this, this surface group has the highest uh, soot sensitivity to uh, ammonia addition. So in this writing uh, inception, we provide a higher um, high surface group because the suit formation is more close to the preform. So that's why we got a better result. We do almost that, uh, one more step for the suit surface group model. So we add these two reaction. The, the reason is based on some the functional chemistry calculation. This natural uh, natural contained species or radical such as HCN, NH2, we may block the reactive reactive sites and prevent the further group of the suit. So we add this HCN and NH2. We consider these two species because they are the uh, uh, highest concentration for the in this plane. So here we show the results after con considering this uh, Reaction with the NH2, the result is much improved and can match it to the simulation. And we also multiply the reaction to uh, two types because we want to see the sensitivity of the reaction rate. And then we also do the turbulence uh, shooting flame and then we using the FPV simulation. So during the timings, we will skip this part. So this is some preliminary results for the uh, using the LES and FPV for our in-house uh, shooting flame. So uh, this is the last our uh, in our group for the some ongoing projects using the open form. And then for summary, so open form is a really a, a <coughs> nice CRD partner with a high fidelity simulation. He is already pro provides a lot of useful functions. Function and can be easy to use. And then, so I wish all the audience today has a couple of CFD software. So, thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you for your very nice presentation. We have some time for some very quick questions. Yeah. Uh -huh. 